Hello. I wonder if you might like to join me in a few minutes worth of an act of worship and prayer and praise to God. I wanted to start with a really lovely prayer that was written between 1380 and 1471. That was the life of Thomas a Kempis, whom you might have heard of. And this is his lovely prayer. Loving God, I offer myself to you, my mind to imagine the possibilities of your kingdom, my eyes to see the needs of the world, my ears to hear the cries of the world, my voice to share your good news, my hands to work in your service, my feet to walk the path set before me, my heart to love you above all things. Grant me to know that which is worth knowing, to love that which is worth loving, to praise that which can bear with praise, to hate what in your sight is unworthy, to prize what to you is precious, and above all, to search out and to do what is well-pleasing unto you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The readings that are set by the church today to be read in the morning are from the Old Testament, the one where Moses and some of the leaders of Israel, when they are wandering in the desert, go up onto Mount Horeb to see the Lord. And Moses goes into a cloud to be with God for 40 days and 40 nights. And he will come back with the Ten Commandments. And he will come back refreshed and strengthened by God to continue what God has asked him to do, to lead God's people. Moses did indeed give himself completely to God and to God's people. The, the reading from the New Testament is about Mary, newly pregnant, going to visit her pregnant cousin or relative, Elizabeth. Mary has already given herself to God completely in a yes that she would bear the saviour of the world. And when she goes to see Elizabeth, she sings out that amazing song we call the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my saviour, for he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary was speaking in a time when actually powerful people were still on their thrones and people were still lowly and going hungry, but she could see God's love in all things and she agreed to work with God. There are many people we know who at the moment are giving themselves to other people, to our nation, to God. Every day in our prayers, we are holding these people before the Lord, lifting them up to God's throne, lifting up those people who are giving themselves in the service of strangers, in the service of the sick and the suffering, in the service of neighbours and friends, in the service of strangers who need their life to continue, people who are in danger, people who are faithful, people who are Christians, people who have other faiths, and people who have no religious faith. We hold these people 
before our loving Saviour, knowing that our Saviour loves them and loves us, through and in all things. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> The prayer to finish is from Augustine of Hippo, who wrote some marvellous prayers. I'm not saying I'm in agreement with a lot of the other things he said, frankly, but I do love most of his prayers. O oh God, you are the light of the minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you. Help me to know you that I may truly love you and so to love you that I may fully serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless you and keep you, and those whom you love. May God bless and keep our nation and our world. Amen.